A new study connects the intense heat in the northern hemisphere with human-caused climate change. And the deadline is looming to avoid a strike by more than half of the employees at UPS. Good morning. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. A new international study finds heat waves baking the northern hemisphere this summer would be nearly impossible, but for climate change. NPR's Nathan Rott says the scientists conclude things are worse because humans are making them worse. It says that the recent heat waves in America and southern Europe, which have broken records and put tens of millions of people under heat advisories and warnings, would be, quote, virtually impossible, end quote, without human-caused climate change. And that recent heat waves in China were made 50 times more likely because of it. NPR's Nathan Rod reporting. President Biden is poised to sign a proclamation today honoring Emmett Till. Today would have been his 82nd birthday. The black boy was kidnapped and lynched in 1955. The white men accused of murdering him were acquitted by an all-white jury. The monument will also honor Till's mother, Mamie. It was she who insisted her son's casket be open at his funeral so the world could see how he had been tortured. A potential strike at package delivery company UPS is becoming more likely. A deadline is looming for a union contract to expire. From member station WABE in Atlanta, Christopher Alston reports contract talks are set to resume today. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters represents over half of UPS's workforce. The Teamsters are calling for better pay, particularly for part-time employees, and improved working conditions. Annual profits at UPS in the past two years are close to three times what they were before the pandemic. Both sides have made tentative agreements on some issues, but government intervention is possible if a deal isn't reached before July 31st. UPS recently announced plans to train non-union employees to make deliveries if union workers walk. But UPS pilots say they will not cross picket lines and fly during a strike. For NPR News, I'm Christopher Alston in Atlanta. A jury has ordered anti-government extremist Ammon Bundy and his associates to pay more than $50 million to Idaho's largest hospital. It's in connection with armed protests at the hospital last year that led to a security lockdown. NPR's Kirk Siegler reports Bundy was a no-show at the trial that wrapped up last week. In a statement, St. Luke's Hospital says the jury's decision brings accountability to Bundy and his associates who they say are still engaged in a campaign of intimidation, harassment and disinformation directed at hospital leaders, doctors and medical staff. During a two-week civil trial here, attorneys said the militants tried to stage an armed takeover of the hospital. State social workers had hospitalized one of Bundy's associates' malnourished grandsons. It's unclear how much, if any, of the some $50 in damages will ever get paid. Bundy is apparently continuing to be holed up at his home in a rural area outside Boise, defying an arrest warrant. Kirk Ziegler, NPR News, Boise. You're listening to NPR News from Washington.